Lord cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. 24. God is a spirit. Can't see a spirit. But he is a spirit. And it says, and they, they, referring to what God is looking for, referring to what God wants, referring to what God desires. It says, they that worship him, maybe, m- what must, must, not might be, not sometimes. There's an obligation to those that love the Lord that they must worship him in spirit and in truth. May you put your Bibles down. Let's clap our hands and let's pray and just welcome what God is going to do. My God in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. For you are high. You are high. You are high and lifted up, God. And we lift our heads to you, Lord, knowing, God, that you have a word for us all in this place. God, reveal yourself to us, God, by your spirit, by your power, by your demonstration. Remind the devil that will try to hinder, that will try to distract, that will try to confuse in the name of Jesus. God, open up our minds to receive. Ready us to feast upon thy word. Ready us to change directions, ready us to renew our minds and our souls as we give you praise and glory for what you're about to do, even in this place tonight. Glory be to thy name, and great is thy faithfulness, and great is thy mercy, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. One more time, clap your hands before the Lord. Praise God, praise God. You may be seated for a little while. I wanted to give you the short version because I didn't want to keep you standing, but I want to read the whole scripture because I believe in this is a lot of meat. There's a lot of uh, substance in the scripture. Uh, David, would you start with four and five? And we're going to go there. I may mention, do some commentary, but, you know, we're just going to go with where the spirit wants us to go. Um, John four and five. Get it there. If you have your Bibles, you can follow. If you want to follow on the board, that's fine. It says, then cometh he, speaking of Jesus, to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son. Um, Samaria had some history, as we see, because it mentioned Jacob gave this to his son. And it says, now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, was being wearied from his journey, or with his journey, sat there on the well. And about the six, uh, and it was about the sixth hour. When I look at the scripture, it lets me know that Jesus, I mean, he was really, he was tired. And he sat by the well. And some of you may say, well, why didn't he go in the well and get some water? Because he didn't have the proper tools. But, you know, God, he knows everything. So he was waiting for the next thing. Now, here it is on 4-7. It says, then cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. Obviously she had the proper twos. And for his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew ask drink of me which am a woman of Samaria? Question mark. Ask him a question. For the Jews have no dealings with Samaritans, with Samaritans. Let me just explain a little bit, you know, just when in the study, when I was studying this, the Samaritans versus the Jews. And I kind of wanted to break, bring this out so we can understand a little bit more about these type of people. The Samaritans were similar to the Jews, both in blood and religion. They were very similar to the Jews. But they were Mongol Jews, meaning they were mixed, mixed Jews, mixed with pagans, mixed in all kinds of different races. But they still consider themselves as people of God um, because they defected. They, de- they basically defected their devotion to Judaism in their, their partially pagan industry. And the Samaritans was despised by ordinary Jews. So they was basically 
despised by Jews because they were half Jews. And we got that. They were half Jews. They came to, uh, they began to taunt the Jews by saying, we have a better gospel or a better religion than you. Um, they went by the Old Testament, the first five books of the Old Testament. And they basically taunted the Jews by saying, we have the real deal and you have the fake stuff. So there was this dispute, this argument going on. Therefore, the Jews hated the Samaritans and basically publicly made them an open shame. The Samaritans didn't have a lot of laws. Uh, um, they, were, they didn't have a lot of rights being Samaritans because the Jews despised them and the Jews would always favor against them. So because the Jews hated them, they didn't want to travel to um, travel to Judea because if they wanted to travel to Judea, they had to cross the land of the Samaritans. So before, and instead of them going the short route to cross over to the city of Samaritan because they had to cross over it to get to the next town, they went the long way. And it said they crossed the river of Judah, the river of, actually let me make sure, the, river, the Jordan River, basically to avoid even being seen with the Samaritans. So we kind of understand that these people basically were religious people, but they were in a little bit of an error. Or do we know that they were in an error? This almost reminds me of today with all the different religions going on that these people say we have this and we have that, and, and people are just kind of like doing their own thing now. But Going back to the scripture now, now that we understand, Jesus in 410, it says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, give me to drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given thee living water. So Jesus speak of living water. And uh, basically living water represents the salvation of God. The woman said unto him, Sir, I'm thinking she's not fully understanding who he is. Thou hast nothing to draw, draw with, and the well is deep. From whence thou hast coming, whence thou hast thou that living water. So how do you have this living water? You don't even have tools to draw the well. And then, so the woman says, and she, uh, I believe she began to challenge his uh, uh, his religion or his theology because the next scripture says art thou greater than our father Jacob which gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle so Jacob if you go back to Genesis he brought this land sold it to his son built this well and his whole, his whole cattle everything was fed so the Samaritans looked at the specific place and said because we are here we are better than the Jews because so they, they used this line before so they tried to use this line on Jesus to say hey are you saying you're better than our father Jacob you know and, and Jesus answered to her and said whatsoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again speaking of the well Jacob's well but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall Never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be a well springing up living water into everlasting life. Speaking of the salvation, and um, she didn't quite understand that, but if you can find references to this scripture in Isaiah 12, 3, and it talks about God bringing a, a joy, water springing out the well, waters of salvation, it's all over the Bible. So, so the woman says in 415, he says, the woman said unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. She's still thinking physical. So she's saying, give me this water that I may thirst not. And um, that way I don't have to come here anymore to draw. So she's still thinking of the natural here. She's not getting the spiritual element of this. And rightfully so, many of us probably would be the same way. I don't want to come here. Give me this water so I'll never thirst again. Of course, Jesus challenged her and said, go get thy husbands, thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus answered to her, and we know this, thou sayest well, I have no husband. For thou hast five, he prophesied to her now, for thou hast had five husbands. And he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that thou saith truly. 
So the woman kind of, you know, realized, oh, okay, oh my goodness, who am I talking to? So she says, the woman said unto him, I perceive you are a prophet. So she kind of changed her motive a little bit and said, I perceive you are a prophet. And then, she, and then she goes here and says, our fathers worship in this mountain, the Samaritans, our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem, she's still in the theology, she goes back to challenge him a little bit. Our fathers worship in this mountain, in this place, and ye say that Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Obviously, the Jews were probably saying, Jerusalem is where we're supposed to worship, and they were saying, this, the, Jacob's mountain is where we're supposed to worship. So she throws throws that back in there, basically limiting uh, worshiping God to a physical place. And going to 21, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. He was basically saying, no, okay, with all this arguing going on, the time is going to come where you not worship in this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Now, I want you to focus. Jesus kind of hit her um, her belief or the Samaritan's belief on this next one. It says, ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, he's speaking of the Jews, for salvation is of the Jews. So basically, he was telling the lady, you are in error. You know not what you worship, but we know what we worship, and kind of lift, lift up the Jews and give her the truth that you are in error. We worship the true God. But then he stopped right there and said, but, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to, to worship him. It says God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Well, if you look at what Jesus said to him, and, you, and said, um, um, you shall no longer worship in this mountain, nor this city, for the Father seeketh true worshiper. Worship in spirit and truth. The title of this message I want to call it is True Worship. True Worship. True Worship. Why did he say this to the woman? Because he wasn't looking for an average worship. He wasn't looking for just an ordinary worship. Not a worship in the city of Jerusalem, nor in the mountain of Jacob. He wasn't looking for average worship in a region or a place. He is not looking for an average worshiper in a house made with hands or a house made with wood or stone. Nor is he looking for average worship in just a a two-day-a-week service on a Wednesday and a Sunday. Not worship that is fake without emotion or passion. God is not looking for fake worship. He's not looking for worship without integrity, affection, or confusion. But he is looking for worship in spirit and in truth. For it says he seeketh that, that type of worship. And that's the only worship that please him. I want to talk a little bit about worship and um, get into a little definition here. Um, when I was doing a study, I came across this one, which I thought was good. It said, the word worship comes from worth and ship, like it split the words, and it says worth and ship, which means to declare a certain type of worthiness. The Hebrew word for worship is, is shaka, shaka, and it's basically give you a list of things that you do to show forth worship. Like it says, to bow, to bow down, to reverence, to fall down, to stoop, to crouch, and it, just anything to give honor and reverence. In this world, everybody worships, whether they are aware of it or they are not aware of it. What does worship mean? It means you are determining your values, you are determining your priorities, and most importantly, you are determined who you will become. So worship, wherever you worship, you begin to become the object of what 
you worship. Uh, you can look at the drug addict and just see somebody on heroin, and you look at the before pictures, how they all nice, and then you look at the after pictures, and it's a horrible scene. We can look at the world today, and we can look out and just go out and look at the world, and we can tell what people are worshiping based on how they look, how they dress, how they talk. There's people that worship sinful music, and they begin to cater their dress, their style, their clothes, even their talk to cater to that. There are people that worship silver and gold, and they begin to show for selfishness and pride and, 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 and arrogance in worshiping silver and gold. It is apparent that people become like what they worship. And when they continue to worship, they began to manifest the attributes of the God they worship. You can see a sample of this in, uh, uh, David talks about it in Psalms 115 and also 135. Oh, there's so much people that worship different things in this world, but I want to be one to worship God. I want to be one to follow him. I want to think like him. I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. You should want to talk like him, think like him, and do everything that he says. I want to be like him. Praise God, praise God, praise God. God is looking for worship directed towards him. Worship comes, worship that comes from the inner heart, which is full, fueled by the desire. God is wanting somebody that wants to worship him, that desires to worship him. God wants a man or a woman that will hunger and thirst after him. You need to look at this. When I think of hunger and thirst, when you are hungry and you are thirsty and you are on the verge of death, you will do anything for that bite. You will do anything for that drink. And this is what God is saying. He is painting a picture. I want my people to hunger and thirst after me like it's their last breath, like it's their last meal, like it's their last drink of water. Because God is seeking somebody that will worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, if you think you can just worship on a Wednesday and just a Sunday and those two days, I don't want to be mean, I don't want to be rude, but I'm going to tell you like Jesus said in John 4, 22, you know not what you worship. You know not what you worship. God is seeking a worship every day. Somebody that will acknowledge him every day. Somebody that will seek him every day, every second, every hour. Praise God. That's the kind of worship that God is seeking. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I want to talk a little bit about the spirit now. Moving to the spirit. Um, you know, worship in the spirit. You know, when you think of that, it kind of like, well, well, how do you do that, right? How do you worship in the spirit? There are several ways um, we can read the scripture to kind of give the example. But I'm going to give you, there are like two types of spirit. The Bible speaks of it. The spirit of man and the spirit of God. Now, when you're thinking about worshiping in the spirit, we must understand um, what makes spiritual worship. So you have physical worship and you have spiritual worship. Physical is what can be seen Physical is what can be seen, like when I clap my hands and when I jump and when I dance and when I shout or when we dance or when we shout or when we move about. That is the physical worship. That is a form of expression to God, and that is a good thing. It is, uh, it's, it's we are expressing, we are praising, and we are worshiping God. Spiritual is what cannot be seen. Um, I want to say it, it's like this. It's like Physical, a spiritual comes from the 
inside of you. It comes from the inner man. It's not, it's not so much this outward showing, but it's this inner person in you that desires God, that wants more of God, that wants to seek him, that wants to talk to him. And we got to be careful because we can dance and shout, but it may not be true worship. We can clap our hands and we can run around the church, but it may not be true worship because God is seeking true worship. True worship, true worship. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Singing is a form of, of a physical manifestation. But when you sing under the anointing and you feel the inner person crying out to God and you begin to sing, the anointing pours out of the voice. When you begin to praise God and it comes from the inner man and you begin to thank God from the inside, that it manifests on the outside. When you begin to worship true, your neighbor will feel it, that person will feel it, Everybody will flit around you because it is genuine. This is the type of worship God is seeking. True, genuine worship from the inner man. From the inner man. Look at this in Matthew 23. It talks about the Pharisees. And it says how they make long prayers just to be seen of man. Just to be seen. And they make these long prayers. That is not true worship. That is fake worship. To want to be seen of man. And you look at it, how they fast and they show themselves all pitiful in the corner. That is not true worship. That is fake worship. Wanting to be seen of man. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to come and praise God, do it with your whole heart. Don't do it to be seen of man. Don't do it to please the pastor. Don't do it to please the saints. Just do it because it comes from your heart. That it may come from the inside of you. That it may manifest on the outside. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We had a prayer meeting here last night and it was just like pow. It's like wow. I mean somebody's laying on the floor and you can hear nothing but the Holy Ghost speaking and tongues and it was just true worship. It was beautiful and it was powerful and God is seeking that type of worship. That's why when you're standing in church and several people are clapping their hands and one person in the world is like oh praise God and they're like all over the place. That person has reached the level of true worship. The other folks are just fake. They're just clapping their hands because the man said clap their hands. They're just jumping up and down because they see everybody else. But every now and then somebody reached that realm of true worship and they began to let it come out and it manifests and it's contagious. When one person do it, the other person feels it. When the other person do it and it's like wildfire and it began to spread. God make us true worshipers. Make us true worshipers. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Worshiping in the spirit will reflect how you walk and how you think. The Bible talks about being carnally minded in Romans 8 and 6. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritual minded is life and peace. What is carnal mind? What is carnal mind? This is the type of mind that just says it's all about me. This is the type of mind that says I got to get my next fix. This is the type of mind that will say I am going to do me. I don't care what anybody else says. I'm going to do me. This is the type of mind that will despise the word of God. When the pastor's preaching and, and preaches hard out, this the carnal mind will say, well, that is not for me. I am fine where I am. The carnal mind will challenge the word of God and will challenge the man of God. Look in the Old Testament and you've seen how the people of God were challenged and how they were challenged by the carnal minded, by the challenge by the people that doubted. Oh, the spirit of God move and the spirit of God will speak to the saints of God and some of us with our carnal minds begin to reject the word of God. God give us people that look love your word. Give us people that will hear your word. God, let us reverence your word and let us change. Let us change. Save us from this body of flesh. 
Our minds should always be on the cross. Our minds should always be looking to get better, looking to do better, looking to follow Jesus. Our minds should always be on the cross. Our, our theme is focus. It's focus. This is a powerful theme. And I know the Lord gave it to you. This is focus. Because a saint that is not focusing is a saint that is washed to and fro like a wind, like a, the waves and just going to and fro, to and fro. God is wanting us to focus on him and him alone, him alone. We follow the man of God as he follows Christ. We focus on him alone. We encourage each other and we look to him. God is looking for true worship, true worship. We want to focus my mind on on fighting sin. I want to focus my mind on doing the will of the Lord. I want to focus my mind on talking right, speaking right, even the simple things that are in my heart that may hold me back. You need to have that same zeal. God, whatever is in me that is not like you, reveal it unto me that I may be a true worshiper. Praise God. Walking, walking in the spirit. Galatians 5, 16 explains as well. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh, this body, this body, this fleshly mind, this carnality, it, it, it lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if you be led by of the spirit ye are not under law if you be led of the spirit you can conquer anything if you be led of the spirit what is the spirit this is the spirit of the holy ghost and that's what i want to talk about a little bit you may say well what is the spirit when it refers to the spirit it is speaking of the holy ghost romans 8 16 says the spirit beareth witness again with our spirit that we are the children of God. The Holy Ghost bears witness. It, it mentioned two spirits in here. It says the spirit uh, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. The spirit of man is the part of us that communicates with the spirit of God. Everything is internal. My spirit man communicates with the spirit of God that is in me, that it corrects me, that it strengthens me. Then you have the spirit of God. You should feel conviction. You should feel that tug at you when you say something wrong or when you think something wrong. You should feel that spirit in you saying, no, you need to repent. You need to turn from this. That is the spirit of truth trying to speak to you. Do not despise that spirit. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It says, but the natural man received nothing from God because basically they just do not care about God. It says they're spiritually discerned. They don't care. The natural man just kind of goes on living. A perfect example is an atheist. Look at them. They maybe have a good life and they're doing just fine, but they don't care about the things of God. Praise God. They don't care about the, the things of God. Praise God. John 16, 13. How bit when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you unto all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whosoever shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. Speaking of the Holy Ghost, that will reveal things. Somebody say you can't get revelation. It's only for the ministers, only for this. But God will give you revelation. If you're seeking him out every day, he will give you a revelation. He will give you a revelation that will of yourself, of your soul, that nobody else can see but God. Praise God. I want God to just kind of come in my heart and just sit down. Just sit down. Just sit there and stay there. Because when God is in your heart, evil has to go. Sin has to go. All this fleshly desire has to go. God, get in me and stay there. Praise God. Praise God. John 14, 6 it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. 
John 14, 7, and even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. This is before Jesus died. Praise God. And then we go back to the, go forward to the book of Acts and we see the power that the Holy Ghost says uh, it came like a cloven tongues like fire set upon each of them. They began to speak. The Holy Ghost then manifest itself inside of us and inside of us. And that is happening till this day. Praise God. It was the day of Pentecost. Praise God. Truth. 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 Let's talk about truth. We got worship, spirit, and in truth. Let's get on truth. And this is just teaching. Is this okay? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Truth basically means our hearts much must match our deeds. When you read 1 John 3.18, it says, My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Some of us be like, oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Don't even make that phone call. Don't even visit at the hospital. Oh, I love you, I love you. God's saying that's some fake love. That is some fake love. When you're telling you love somebody, then they're sick in the hospital, you won't visit them, you won't call them, you won't encourage them. Praise God, praise God. If you love somebody, let it be a true. Don't say you love somebody and you're just saying it just to say it because that's not true. And God sees the heart, amen? Praise God, praise God. I, I like to look at truth and, and when you're worshiping God, it's almost like a matching game. It's like the heart and the inner man must, must match with the action. If they don't match with the action, then it doesn't appear true before God. It, it appears empty. If the inner man does not match with what you are displaying outwardly, it is not true worship. It's just empty worship. Everything we say, everything we do must be met with power. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Every word that comes out of your mouth to honor God should come from the heart and be powerful. Praise God. When you say hallelujah, it should be powerful. Praise God. When you clap your hands, it should be powerful. When you jump and shout and whatever you do, it should be powerful. This is true worship that God seeks after and that God is pleased with. If, if this doesn't match, if it doesn't match, then we have the preliminary hand clap and the preliminary uh, shout and the preliminary dance. And, and then we go out living in this world and nothing has changed at all. Nothing has changed at all. And we come back here on a Wednesday or Sunday and nothing has changed. Uh, and, 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 and there is no growth. There is no growth. There is no growth. Praise God. Praise God. Look at this in Matthew 15, 7. It says, ye hypocrites, where did Elijah prophesy unto you, saying, this people draw nigh unto me? That means they draw near unto me. He's saying, these people draw near unto me. You think that's a good thing? He said, with their mouth. And he said, and honor me with their lips. That means they draw near with their mouth in their lips. But it says, but their heart is far from me. And it says, but in vain do they worship me. In vain do they worship me. You may say you love God. You may say you worship God. But what are you doing outside of the four walls? What are you doing on your free time? Are you worshiping God? Praise God. Are you seeking God? Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. It must be important that we do not fall into this category where we honor just with our lips and just say things just to say it, and it doesn't mean anything before the Lord. The way you want to get blessed, if you truly want to get blessed, you praise God in spirit and truth. You worship him in spirit and in truth because that's what he seeketh. Amen, amen, amen. I want to talk a little bit about this, just a little bit. Um, a lie that doesn't speak. Um, when I was uh, doing this study, uh, it felt like God wanted me to kind of bring this up. A lie that doesn't speak. A lie that doesn't talk. A lie that is not caused by simply speaking or saying, even though you can speak and say a lie. But this is a lie that someone actually take in them and believe it. They hear something and they believe it. We see in Second Thessalonians, it says, um, 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 he was speaking to the, uh, speaking of the Antichrist, and 2 and 11 says, for this cause God shall send them a strong delusion that they shall believe a lie and be damned. 
praise God. As Christians, as senior saints, it must be important that we do not believe lies. It's important that we test every spirit and everything to see whether it is from God. What do I mean by believing a lie? Pastor will preach and say, quit smoking and quit drinking. And we say, it's okay. That's believing a lie. A pastor will say, don't do this and don't do that. Or the word will say this and that. And you continue to do it. That's believing a lie. And God has grace and mercy. And he will keep us. Uh, it will help you to a certain point and then you will stop and not move until you kill something, until you change your ways, until you let go of that thing that God is telling you to let go of. And when you let go of that thing that God is telling you to let go of, you begin to move up in God until you face the next challenge. This is a growing process. But when pastor speaks, when the word of God comes forth, something has to die. Praise God. Praise God. So be careful that we do not believe a lie. Be careful that you do not believe a lie because you can believe a lie and dance and shout. You can believe a lie and run up in this place. You can believe a lie and be in the service of the church for about 10 15 years and the only reason why that light is still there is because you haven't learned to worship him we haven't learned to worship him in spirit and in truth every single day every single day when you get on your knees and pray it must be true it must be a spirit of truth that is in you you must do this in truth praise God praise God praise God Hallelujah. So when we come to the house of God, take heed to what God is saying. Take heed to what God is telling you. And take heed to the word of God. Even in this place, as we are standing, I believe that there are some people in here that are seeking God. I believe there are people in here that are worshiping God in spirit and in truth. And God is going to continue to bless you. God is going to continue to see to, to lift you to a higher level. Continue to move forward. And if you are here and you don't have the Holy Ghost, uh, just seek out God. Just seek him with the inner man. There are people in this place that may not have the Holy Ghost. And they go out there and they live like the world and they come into church and say, give me the Holy Ghost. Give me the Holy Ghost. And they find it a struggle to get the Holy Ghost. But if you seek ye first the kingdom of God, if you seek to do right, if you seek seek to think right, if you seek to be like him, if you pray, if you are constantly seeking God, if you are doing that because you desire your hunger and thirst after him, God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Look at the book of Acts. You may be asking, you may be getting discouraged. Well, how come these people in the book of Acts got, uh, the book of Acts felt the Holy Ghost so quick? I believe these were people after God's heart that were seeking God, that let go of the world, that when they heard the word, they only had to hear it once and the Holy Ghost came upon them and they began to speak in tongues. Try it. Seek God daily. Seek God hourly. Seek to do his will. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. And God will fill you. And God will fill you. And God will fill you. I remember the time when I was trying so hard to receive the Holy Ghost. And I tried and I tried and I tried. And I wouldn't receive it. It was only then that I took in my upon myself and said, I'm going to seek God. I prayed. I seek God. And I said, this is the day. This is the day that I'm going to get the Holy Ghost. I knew it. God put something in my heart as a sinner. said, this is the day I'm going to receive it. And I went to that church expecting something. It took me a while. Probably took me a little bit of 30 minutes. But I, my hands start shaking. My body starts shaking. And next thing you know it, I'm all over the place. Devils are flying off of me. Amen. And I'm just dwelling in this awesome presence of God. I was telling my cousin Jumbo that I, I woke up and the first thing I saw was underneath the chair. <laughs> and it was just, I was like, how did I get here? But I didn't care. I felt light. I felt great because the spirit of truth came in me. My helper came in me. My helper came in me. And I was excited. 
about that time. And some of you, if you think about the time when you got the Holy Ghost, think about how sincere you were. Think about how you pushed and you pressed on and you just kept pressing and God filled you with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Think about that time when you was filled, when you was renewed. This is a type of worship that God wants daily from his saints. Daily from his saints. Hallelujah. 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 There is an effort out there from the enemy and the forces of darkness to deceive you, to deceive me, to get us focused on carnal things, to make sure we become bound to a lie, to make sure we get comfortable with where we at, to make sure we get comfortable with the simple struggles of life. Sometimes the devil would just kind of provide a little relief and we began to feel free and he put it back on us to get us comfortable to say, hey, this thing is with me and this is the way I am and this is who I am. But God came and he died that I may be set free, that you may be set free. Amen. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, he will give you freedom from that sin and freedom from from anything that is holding you and binding you. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Praise God, praise God, praise God. So worshiping in spirit and in truth will give you true worship before God. Proverbs 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thy own understanding. When you lean to your own understanding, that brings confusion. That brings something in you that will just kind of get your mind all crazy. But it says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. God is wanting somebody to acknowledge him daily. God is wanting somebody to acknowledge him in the morning. God is wanting somebody to acknowledge him in the noonday. Acknowledge him when you go to work. Acknowledge him when you're at the restaurant. Acknowledge him at the grocery store. Acknowledge him constantly. Acknowledge him. And when you begin to acknowledge him, God will give you a voice. And when he gives you that voice, obey that voice. That is the voice of truth. The voice of truth will tell you not to get mad when somebody cuts you off. The voice of truth will tell you to come down when you are in the midst of an argument. The voice of truth will tell you not to say that and not to do that and not to go there and not to go here and not to watch that and not to attend this. The voice of truth will tell you that, but you have to acknowledge him. God is wanting somebody to acknowledge him. There are too many Christians in the house of God that are not acknowledging God and you are up and you are down and you are doing things however you want it, but you come in service on a Wednesday and Tuesday and only worship God. God is wanting you to worship him every day, every hour. Acknowledge him. Say, God, do you want me to watch this? God, do you want me to go here? God, do you want me to see this? God, do you want me to do that? And then God will give you a voice. And because you acknowledge him and you obey the voice, God will bless you. God will bless you. He will lift your heart. He will make sure you prosper and he will lift you in a high place. I must obey the voice. I must obey the voice of God. I must obey. We must obey the voice of God. And God is wanting me to tell the people, acknowledge him. Get in the spirit and get in the truth. God doesn't want us to be like the Pharisees. That's why the scripture is there, to give us an example of how they were. We are to do the opposite of what they are. Every word that come out of our mouth should spring forth life, for it's as out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. Encourage your brother. Encourage your sister. Seek out God. Encourage the stranger. Pray for the stranger. Give to the poor. Clothe the hungry. The spirit of God will move upon you and cause you to do the good things and the righteous things before God. Praise God. I'll tell you a story. Uh, I told the story. And I'm not going to be long with that. I'm just going to say, you know, if, if you haven't given to the poor yet, 
And God is going to bring somebody directly to you. And if you're not sensitive to acknowledge the Lord, you're just going to totally fail that test. I remember I failed the test one time. I was not acknowledging the Lord. I was on my way to work. And um, this guy, I got out and I went to McDonald's. It was about uh, 12 years ago. No, about seven years ago. And I remember I was like walking. I was just in a hurry. I got to get to work. I don't have time. And the guy's like, sure, can I spell? I'm like, uh-uh. And I just walked in there. And I'm like, give me a number two or whatever. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I walked out. And, I, and for some of the Holy Ghost, I felt the Holy Ghost hit me on that guy. And, um, and I'm like, dang, I should have gave him some. So, so I walked out. I'm like, I don't want to see this guy again. And I walked in. He's like, God bless you. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> he was like, God bless you. And ever since then, the Holy Ghost began to convict my heart and say, hey, give, 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 give. I'm not saying give a 20, but, you know, if they want something to eat, buy them something to eat. And then you buy them something to eat and say, hey, brother, can I pray for you? Hey, brother, can, have you heard about the Lord? Brother, you don't have to stay in this place. This is how the Holy Ghost works. We're going to mess up. That's okay. But get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. You're going to slip. You're going to fall. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times, but get up. Get up and keep going. Get better. Get better. Pass the test. Get out of fourth grade in the spirit and move on to fifth grade. And then graduate from fifth grade and move on to sixth grade. Don't stay where you are. Don't stay where you are. And don't stay where you are. I ask you a simple question. Have you have grown in the spirit of the Lord? Look, look back over your life. Have you have grown from where you are the last month or last year, last two years? Have you have grown? Do you still see yourself in the same place? If you do, ask yourself, have I been truly worshiping God? Because when you worship God, you become more like him, and you will change and change and change. Praise God. I was reading. I'm trying to remember that scripture. It came, it came to me. And um, he was talking about, he said, um, um, I fed you with, I think it was Hebrews, I fed you with milk. He said, for ye are yet carnal. He was like, I want to give you meat, but I can't, for ye are yet carnal. If a man of God come and say, ye are yet carnal, I'm going to go back to my scripture and say, the carnal mind is an enemy against God. I need to change. I need to change. He's right. Ye are yet carnal, because he said, there was contention amongst you. There's contention. Um, we shouldn't gossip, church. We shouldn't gossip. In the Bible, you read it, and it's like, it's right there. It's like right there. We shouldn't gossip. If there's an art with your brother, go to him, talk to him. If an art with your sister, go to him and talk to him. That kills everything. That kills everything. That kills everything. Praise God. Some of us, we complain on the silent, and, and we all silent, and we all complaining. Then we develop these clicks, and then, and then there's problems from that. And then we start believing lies, and then our worship is tainted. Praise God. Our worship is tainted because we can't even respect the singer. We can't even respect the minister. We can't even respect because there's a little click going on. But if you just kind of develop the courage and go talk to that person, I'm sure everything will just work out fine. Praise God. God is looking for true worship. God is looking for true worship. When you begin to worship God true, this worship will make you cry. This worship will make you passionate. This worship will make you consistent. It will change your life. This worship will give you a revelation. This worship will change your direction. This worship will destroy stronghold. This worship will change your life. This worship will heal you. This worship will strengthen you. This worship will give you power. Where this worship will change your life. This worship will destroy the bondage of the devil. This worship will destroy sin. This worship will change your mouth, change your mind, change the way you think, change the way you talk. This worship will change your life. Praise God. Let's stand. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. True worship. Yes, the instruments can come. True worship. True worship comes from the inner man. Comes from the inner man and it connects with the Holy Ghost. Nobody can see it, 
but it then began to manifest. You know, Pastor, we can always tell the fake ones, and they just kind of clap their hands. You can always feel it, but you can tell those are sincere because the pastor can discern it, you know, and, and we, can, we can tell that those are when those are sincere and they are worshiping true. Imagine if everybody would worship truly from the heart. Truly from the heart. And just like scream out from the inside and I want you, God. I desire you, God. I need you, God. You know, you can stand there in quiet and if you worship from the heart, a sample of spirit, it will just come out. It will just come out. Let's exercise it real quick. Everybody stand. Now, if you came in this place and you hadn't repented yet, I want to encourage you to repent. I encourage you to repent. But if you have repented, let's exercise getting in the spirit and connected with the Holy Ghost. With the every eye closed. Praise God. The inner man in you. Praise God. Just scream out. Scream out and let it manifest. Just scream out. Let it manifest. Scream out. Scream hallelujah in that mind of yours. In that heart of yours. Scream it inside. That's it. Hallelujah. It's true worship. <laughs>